One of my favorite YouTubers is James Gurney. He has a YouTube channel where he goes around and paints outside in his sketchbook using primarily gouache, but sometimes he uses watercolor pencils, which I obviously think is cool. He also wrote this book called Color and Light, and he illustrated and created the book Dinotopia. So how do I become more like James Gurney? Well, maybe I should go to a park and draw some dinosaurs. This place should be good. I know I'm not James Gurney, but I can have fun trying. Let's see how this works. So for this video, I'm going to be sketching three dinosaurs. This first one, I was lucky to find this picnic table in the shade. I feel really successful if I can find a good view with some good shade. I spent quite a while rendering this Allosaurus with pink and purple and orange watercolor pencils. And while the dinosaurs here are really cool, I couldn't deny that I like painting landscapes a little bit better. And I remember James Gurney worked for models called maquettes that he created. And he would put those dinosaurs in front of any scene he wanted. So I'm going to use my artistic liberty and walk down into the shade of this tent and put my dinosaur I just drew in front of this waterfall. For this particular sketch, I'm using a canvas-like artboard called Canva. I like it because it's less absorbent than watercolor paper and it allows the colors to flow and almost get a little drippy. I like that, but not too much because I need to preserve the whites of these waterfalls. I thought it would be a good idea to add some red to these green trees just for complementary color sake, but I quickly realized I made a mistake and these got way too red. That's okay, this is just practice and it's a good day to be out. I'm going to try to put some green Prismacolor over the top of this red to try to tone it down, but I'm not sure I quite got it right, but I was able to cover up most of it. I learned what I needed to learn with this one and it's time to move on. But first, some glamour shots with the Allosaurus. This next sketch is going to be a Triceratops. You can see the crowds are getting bigger, but I fortunately found another shady spot on this bench. I'm going to sketch in a regular sketchbook this time, nothing treated. And fortunately, the scenery is such that I like where it's set, so I'm not going to do anything more than just hang out on this bench. I'll admit, I wasn't really into dinosaurs as a kid. I was more of a woolly mammoth or saber-toothed tiger type of guy. And I gotta say, sketching dinosaurs like this felt like the playtime a kid would have. It has been fun to do some imagination with my sketching. Having a couple of pencils in my hand, sketching in a sketchbook on a summer day, it's just what this old man needs sometimes. I hope this kind of inspires you to do something similar. You may have noticed that I'm not using a pencil here. I'm actually using a watercolor marker by Tombow. It lets me do some quick darker areas without getting the paper too wet. For quick sketches like this, they really work great. You'll see me use one a little bit more in my next final sketch. For now, it's time to say goodbye to the Triceratops and the other dinosaurs and these gardens and head to where I'll do the final sketch. I think I need to simplify things by doing something a bit more stationary and under more consistent light. Plus it'll help that I won't have to find any shade because it's temperature controlled in here. As I start this sketch, you'll see that I started with a loose drawing of this fossil of a Gorgosaurus and I'm using that Tombow marker I mentioned earlier to help me clean up the sketch before I start adding color. So if you've made it this far in the video, you may wonder why I mentioned the book Color and Light in the beginning. Well, that's because while I primarily enjoy doing art for the ways it helps me to relieve stress, I also enjoy getting better at it. Here I used an indigo pencil to separate the background from the structure of the skull, which I'm choosing to do with yellow ochre. This plus black, gray, and white are the only colors that I'm using for this sketch. Gurney talks a lot about using a limited palette in his videos, and that's what I'm trying to do here. It's a great exercise. I'm sketching in the same sketchbook as before, but for this page I prepared it with a pastel ground.
it puts some extra texture on the paper and it makes it a bit less absorbent, which I like for the watercolor pencils. It helps them behave more painterly and, and more fluid. Gurney often pre-prepares his sketchbook pages with a casein underpainting, and you can learn more about that if you watch some of his videos, which I'll link to. There are a lot of things to learn about making a good image. Lighting, color choices, and perspective are at the top of my list for things to learn. Studying James Gurney's books and videos have helped me do that. And while rendering a perfect photorealistic image has never been my goal, I do want them to look realistic in an impressionistic sort of way. This takes a lot of practice, and for me, a lot of experimenting. Using colored pencils instead of paint isn't exactly a traditional approach, but I like it. It suits my style. Practicing drawing from life is the number one thing I've learned from James Gurney. In a couple of his videos, Gurney actually recommends going to what some call a dead zoo and sketching the specimens and artifacts there, which is why I'm here for this final sketch. This has been a fun experiment, and each time I set out to do a sketch, I get to practice what I've learned from others. It's kind of fun, even for an old dinosaur like me. Be sure to go check out some of James's videos. I hope they can inspire you and teach you a few things like they have me. Here's a playlist of his that I recommend, and I'll put some more links in the description. There's also a video here of some of my other adventures. Thanks for exploring art with me.